I'm Dr. Jonathan Salo. If you or someone close to you has been diagnosed with esophageal cancer, this video is intended for you. In this video, you'll learn about definitions of cancer terms, staging of esophageal cancer, and diagnostic tests used for esophageal cancer. There'll be other videos in this series that will go into more detail. The esophagus is a hollow muscular tube that connects the throat to the stomach. For many patients, the first symptoms they have is difficulty swallowing or pain in swallowing. The difficulty swallowing can be due to a lump, also known as a tumor. Let's start with some definitions. A tumor is an abnormal growth. Tumors can be benign or malignant. A benign tumor of the esophagus may grow over time and can cause obstruction and make it difficult to swallow, but it won't ever spread anywhere else. A malignant tumor of the esophagus can cause obstruction, but also has the potential to spread elsewhere in the body. Cancer is another term for a malignant tumor. Unfortunately, the majority of the tumors in the esophagus are cancerous. We'll use the term cancer and tumor interchangeably in this video. In most cases, the diagnosis of esophageal cancer is made by endoscopy, also called EGD for esophago-gastro-duodenoscopy. Under sedation, a flexible scope is passed through the mouth into the esophagus, which allows viewing the inside of the esophagus. If a mass is found in the esophagus, a small portion can be removed, which is called a biopsy. The biopsy is examined by a pathologist who will determine whether the tumor is benign or malignant, whether it's benign or cancerous. If a biopsy of a mass in the esophagus shows cancer, the next step is staging. Staging is the process of determining the extent of a tumor. This includes the size of the tumor and whether or not they're spread to the lymph nodes or possibly even spread to other parts of the body. Once the stage has been determined, it'll be possible to determine the best therapy. In order to determine the stage, we'll focus on three different areas. The first is the tumor. How large is the tumor? And more importantly, how deep has it grown into the wall of the esophagus? The second is whether they're spread to the lymph nodes. And the third is whether there's metastasis, or a spread to other parts of the body. Some drawings will help. The wall of the esophagus has multiple layers shown here. Surrounding the esophagus are lymph nodes. The purpose of the lymph nodes is to filter the blood and help fight infections. But in some cases, cancer in the esophagus can spread to the nearby lymph nodes. In its earliest stages, cancer of the esophagus starts on the inner or the most superficial layer called the mucosa. With time, however, the cancer can continue to grow and invade deeper into the wall of the esophagus. The deeper the cancer invades into the wall of the esophagus, the more likely it is that cancer cells can spread to the lymph nodes. If cancer cells do spread to the lymph nodes, there's a chance that some of those cells can break off and spread to the liver or to the lungs. Metastasis is the term for spread to other parts of the body, such as the liver, lungs, or bone. The stage consists of three parts, T for tumor, N for nodes, and M for metastasis. A T1 tumor involves the top layer of the esophagus. This is the earliest stage of cancer of the esophagus. A T1A tumor involves the mucosa. A T1B tumor involves the submucosa. A T2 tumor invades into the muscular layer. A T3 tumor invades all the way through the muscular layer. A T4 tumor invades into nearby structures such as the aorta or the airway. This may sound confusing, but as a general rule, if someone with esophageal cancer has difficulty swallowing, the tumor is usually a T3 tumor. There are, of course, exceptions, but this is a general guideline. The N classification refers to the lymph nodes. An N0 tumor is one in which there's no spread to the lymph nodes. N1 is when one or two lymph nodes are involved. N2, when there are three to six lymph nodes involved. And N3 is when seven or more lymph nodes are involved. The M classification refers to metastasis. Again, a metastasis is spread of the cancer to other organs such as the lungs, liver, or bone. M0 is when there's no signs of spread to any other organs. And an M1 is when the cancer has spread to other organs. Let's talk about some diagnostic tests that we use for staging. When you meet with your care team, one of the first tasks is to come up with a plan of testing, which is tailored to you and your particular tumor. So we will talk about these tests in general terms but not all tests are needed for all patients. The first is scans. A CT scan is usually the first test for staging. This will show whether they're spread to the nearby lymph nodes 
and will also show whether or not there is metastasis or spread to other organs such as the liver, lung, or bones. A PET scan is a specialized scan that combines a CT scan with an injection of a small amount of tracer that lights up area of cancer. The PET scan is probably the most sensitive test we have to look for spread to other sites. In cases where it's important to know about the exact size of a tumor, an endoscopic ultrasound exam can be done. This procedure is similar to an EGD, but the endoscope has an ultrasound sensor on the end of the scope which produces an image of the tumor. In some cases, particularly for cancers of the very low part of the esophagus or the stomach, it's important to look for signs of spread in the abdominal cavity. In some situations, cancers can spread in the abdominal cavity, but the areas are so small they don't show up on a CT scan. In these cases, a laparoscopy is helpful. Laparoscopy is a surgical procedure done under a general anesthetic. Several incisions about a quarter of an inch long are made, and a telescope is inserted into the abdominal cavity. This allows an examination of the abdominal cavity to look for signs of spread of the cancer. The next video in our series discusses treatment options for esophageal cancer. Feel free to subscribe to be notified of new videos. If you found this video helpful or have questions or suggestions, please leave your comments below.